everyone. So it's Monday and we're looking at our first lesson of the week. It is rectangles and irregular polygons. So that's what we're looking at today. So when you log on to your My Maths, you go down onto geometry, you find year four, you click on rectangles and irregular polygons and you click on the lesson before you do the work. So if that's if you want to go through it. So I'm going to talk you through the lesson. It starts off with showing you a set of rectangles. Now, what is common in all the rectangles? So that means what is the same? In a rectangle, we know there are two sets of parallel sides. So each side which is opposite to each other runs the same way, okay? So here, now this symbol that we've got shows a right angle. We know in a rectangle there are four right angles. The size of one right angle is 90 degrees. So it's 90 degrees for one of these sides, so one of these right angles here. In a rectangle, opposite sides are parallel, one pair of sides and the other pair of sides. And the opposite sides are of equal length. So for example, in this green triangle, if this side's four centimetres, the opposite side will be four centimetres. If this one's 10 centimetres, the opposite side would be 10 centimetres. The same for this purple one. If this side's five centimetres, this one will be five centimetres. If that side's six centimetres, this side will be six centimetres. So the first set of parallel sides are marked with one line. They're all opposite, so that means they're the same. Then you've got the second pair marked with two lines. Now, we've got another a rectangle here. All the properties of rectangle are highlighted. So, we know that all the angles in a rectangle are right angles. Since a right angle is 90 degrees, we can calculate the sum of all the angles in a rectangle. So, in this rectangle at the moment, we have four right angles. So, we've got one, two, three, and four. So, I'm going to click on the hint to help me. So, we know there's four. So, it's 90, and 90, and 90, and 90. Here, they show you as repeated addition, but you can use multiplication. So, I'm going to use my time tables to help me. So, I'm going to do nine times four which is 36, then I'm going to do 36 times 10, because I'm a place value, which is 360. Let's see if we're correct. And there we go. So all the angles add up to 360. So 90 and 90 and 90 and 90. We also know the opposite sides of a rectangle are parallel and have the same length. So if that side's five, this side's going to be five. Exactly. This side's 10 means the opposite is going to be the same, which is going to be 10. If we extended one of the sides beyond the rectangle, a new angle is created. If I draw a straight line here, that means this angle has gone bigger. So we've made it bigger. Can you see? Draw the straight line. There's my angle. Now I've added another angle to it. So it's 90 and this side, we need to work out the missing angle. On a straight line, your angles add up to 180 degrees. So this bit here and this bit, so that 90 and that bit there should be 180. So 100 take away 90 is 90. Mark it and there we go. Now, complete the missing lengths and angles in these rectangles. So as we said, the opposite sides, which are the parallel sides, are always, they always equal the same length. So if I've got 10 here, this side's going to be 10. I've got a 3 here, this side's going to be 3. The angle, each rectangle here, as you can see, it's marked on this orange um, rectangle. It's 90 degrees, so there's my 90. Again, we said we know it was a 90, 90, whoop, 90, and 90. And we know on a straight line our angles add up to 180 so we're going to subtract 90 from there and I'm left with 90. This one here I've got a 4 there. Opposite it I've got a 4. 9 because it's a parallel side, 9 there. And I've got them all correct. Here's another rectangle so we've got 13 centimeters and 7 centimeters. What is the perimeter? So the perimeter is all the edges 
the sides added together. So you'd have to do 13 and 7. Remember, parallel sides, that would be a 13, and that here would be a 7. To calculate this, we need to know the length of all the sides. Since opposite sides are equal, we know the missing lengths. The perimeter is 13, add 13, add 7, add 7, which equals 40 centimetres. So here we don't put squared because it's not area, it's just centimetres, because it's all the edge, that's what you're counting. So 13, add 13, add 7, add 7. So here we've got one, so I know this side is 8. I know the opposite side, which is parallel, is going to be the same, so it's 8. And then I know this side here is 4. I know the opposite side is going to be 4. So 8 at 8 is 16. Add the 4 is 20. Add the 4 is 24. And then we've got it correct. Here's another rectangle. The perimeter is 42. So you can work it out. We know that's the opposite side. So we know that B is going to be 18. We'd have to do 18 at 18 and then subtract it from 42 and half your answer for A and C. So B is 18 because we know that. The perimeter of the rectangle is 42. A plus C plus 18 plus 18 equals 42. So we need to work out 18 at 18. So this is done as 42 take away 18, then take away 18. You could do it the other way where you add 18 and 18 together. So you double it and then take it away from 42. So it depends on whichever method you feel comfortable with. So the answer is six centimetres. Now, one side is not six centimetres. That's the length of both sides. So we need to half that. So divide it by two, it's three centimetres. So here we know this side is seven centimetres. And then we've got our main length as 40. So I'm going to do 7 add 7, which is 14. And then I'm going to subtract that from 40. So if I do 40 take away 10, it's 30. Take away 4, it's 26. Then I need to half 26 because 26 is the length of this side and this side together. Half of 26 is 30. Check my answer. I can add all of these sides together to make sure. And I've got it correct. Looking at the rectangle, 6 times something is 54. Count up in our 6s till we get to 54. So it's length times width. So it's 6 times whatever this number is here in the question mark, which equals 54. And it's 9. So 5 times what is 50? Nice and simple. Let's count up in our 5s first. 5. 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. So it's 10. You'll remember that regular polygons are shapes that have all angles equal and all sides equal. Here are some regular polygons. We've got equilateral triangle, square, regular pentagon, regular hexagon, regular heptagon, regular octagon, regular nonagon, regular decagon, regular dodecagon. So those are your shapes there, which are regular polygons. So we can resize and rotate the shape. Irregular polygons, on the other hand, are shapes that do not have all sides equal and all angles equal. So here we've got an irregular triangle, irregular quadrilateral, irregular pentagon, irregular hexagon, irregular heptagon, irregular octagon, irregular nonagon, and an irregular decagon. That's because all the sides are different lengths, but they still have the amount of sides that you'd call them a pentagon or a hexagon. So on this one, we've still got one, two, three, four, five sides. On a hexagon, we've still got six sides. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's look at, take a look at an irregular pentagon. We can resize and rotate the shape. So I can move it around, make it bigger or smaller. The shape changes in size and position, but remains an irregular shape. The difference between a regular and irregular shape may sometimes be small. Here is a regular hexagon. What would happen if we enlarged or shrunk this hexagon? Although the size of the hexagon would change, its sides would remain equal in length in relation to each other and its interior angles would remain equal in size. It would remain a regular hexagon. 
So nothing would change. It'd still be a regular hexagon, even if I moved it around. Only we're using a ruler to measure the length of the sides. OK, so we know this one is a regular hexagon. This one's irregular. And we know this because that's straight. This side is not straight, so it's different. So as you can see, they're all the same. These are all different. So we've got two which are different, four are the same. And the angles change then as well. They're the same. So the angle here, the angle slightly changed. So that's become 130 degrees and that's become 110 degrees. That is the difference between a regular and irregular. Hopefully this helps. Just make sure you read the question carefully and clearly and then have a go. If you're unsure about anything, feel free to drop an email and ask any questions or comment on the blog. Stay safe. Take care, everyone. And I'll put up a video tomorrow talking about your next math lesson. Keep it up, make sure you're practicing your times tables as much as you can, because the more you practice them, the better and easier everything else will be. Just to give you a heads up, after we've done geometry, we're going to move on towards position and direction. After that, we're going to head back towards place value and give a recap of everything we've learned so far. Good luck, take care and stay safe.